Welcome back. I'm going to give you a quick demo of the DITA Open Toolkit. So, uh, quickly show you some of the key sites. Here's where you could go ahead and download it. DITA-OT.GitHub.io. Download right here. Uh, other website worth noting is right here, these DITA configuration tutorials. This was created by Elliot Kimber. Elliot Kimber is a major force behind DITA. He's written a few books. Uh, I think Data for Practitioners is the uh, is here. Let me show you right now. Okay. Also, he's um, involved with the Data for Publishers. Data for Publishers gives you a little more capability. Uh, I mentioned earlier that we use it to uh, transform from a Word doc into a Data a series of a Data XML. So, I'll give you a little demo of that in a few seconds here. But, uh, but here it is, here's the site, go ahead, download it. Um, let me just do a little recap, a little more detail about what it is. See, I have um, this little presentation here. So what is DITA? It's a Darwinian information typing architecture. It's an XML data model for authoring and publishing. Topic oriented, uh, each topic is a separate XML file. As opposed to DocBook, DocBook I consider to be a precursor. Uh, it's book oriented, a little more complex. Uh, and I believe it's one big XML file. Not an expert doc DocBook. I know it's it's a great solution uh, for this as well. Uh, so you see the diddle, diddle initial spec was in 2001. And DocBook, the initial spec I believe was in 1991. Uh, the core data topic types will show uh, next slide I'll show you a little more about that so there's three different types is concept task and reference and the cool thing about data is that you could uh, just like with object-oriented programming you could subclass or subtype so called specialization so new topics can be derived from existing topics uh, so here you, this slide here kind of summarizes what what uh, I just mentioned. So the uh, first thing is that a topic must have at least an ID IT element with an attribute in the root uh, title and body. I'll show you that in a second. Um, uh, the main thing is there is a data map that stitches these topic XML documents together. And you can see here, um, I could just like be like a base topic has these elements in it. And it, you could derive a concept topic from a topic and similar thing. And then there's a reference topic type. And then there's this task topic type, which has uh, more detail and it has these steps in there. So um, there's a funny slide here. I'll blog about this a little more. But uh, Ellie Kimber's sites I just showed you. Uh, Norm Walsh did a nice uh, uh, blog post about it in 2005, uh, and he mentioned these four uh, technical differences where DITA uh, compares to DocBook, um, saying it's uh, topic-oriented, uh, it's a cross-referencing scheme that's a little more practical, uh, it reinvents this HTML conref. And item four, I think, is the, the big thing, is the this ability to subtyping. Okay, here I will post this as well, but I just uh, shows these sites once again. Okay, uh, one thing, I another thing I wanted to show. Um, so here's the site. Uh, you, once you get the content into this data XML format, then you have uh, this capability to do transformations. We call it a multi-channel output. So from data, I could create PDF, HTML, uh, RTF, that's a uh, text document RTF. What's exciting to me is this RDF, Resource Descriptor Framework, which uh, I'm going to switch to that right here. There's this open source project. Uh, I, I like this notion of using triples to link the data XML together once you have the demo. So when you download that data open toolkit, this is what 
it looks like. So you get this directory, you can see here, it's the DITA uh, version 1.84. It's got this directory structure here. Uh, go into the lib directory and you'll see the, the job code, this dust jar, the DITA open source uh, toolkit jar is the primary entry point for this. And it's also got some uh, XML, build XML files because you could use ant to to experiment with this. And let's try that right now. I'm going to use the, uh, they have this build demo. And I'll run that through command line. Well, let me just close this and show you uh, how I did it from scratch. So in, in did open toolkit, I'm going to just double click on this bat file, which launches this command line. I'm using Windows right now. You can Linux use the sh the shell script. Uh, so right here I could run. Um, uh, I'm going to run that demo XML here, but uh, what that's going to do, it's going to, in this samples directory, there's some sample data in there. And we could take a look at that a little more, but yeah, if, you, if I was to open this guy up here, you'd see it's XML file with references to uh, data topic XMLs, which are in this tasks subdirectory. And you can see that these are data topics. So we can see that right there. So let's give it a shot. So I'm going to do uh, this at the build. See, it's prompting me. And yes, I'm going to use the hierarchy data map file. It's going to go to an output directory. And let's go for a PDF output and continue so give it a few seconds to process so you can see what's going on errors success let's take a look at that uh, output directory here and there it is a pdf nice pdf that was just generated garage tasks washing the car it's got a nice image so we could uh, see the pdf is successfully created. So that was using ant. Uh, there's a way to do this using, uh, you don't have to use ant, you could just use the Java. And let's do that right now. So I'm going to use this command line here, which is just going to invoke that that jar file directly. It's going to use a different data map. It's going to use the task book data map. Um, so let's run that. So same kind of thing here, just uh, we should see similar output. So let's give it a few seconds to run. All right, very good. Let's take a look in that directory. Great, there it is. Nice PDF document that was just created. And let's look at that copy right in to this plugins directory. And that's it. And in here is the word to data. This is the the code that does the word to data transform. It really invokes when, from our suite when you click on do the transform. It invokes this data, this doc to data XLT, and it <coughs> utilizes these XML files in the directory here. Okay, I wanted to show you this. Um, now I mentioned the RDF thing. Let's let's give that a try. Uh, RDF, I find it to be the most, as I say, it's groundbreaking stuff and needs. It's a little early, but um, I'm going to run that same. Actually, let's let's run the HTML one just to show you that HTML gets generated as well. So this is the the magic of Ditto. It gives you the standardized way to do this output stored stored content in a, a raw XML form but you could output into any use any rendering engine uh, to create nice uh, output so let's take a look at what this looks like great so yeah it's mixed in with the PDFs that were generated but you can see there's the index HTML I'll double click on this and you can see it has links to the uh, HTML that was generated Generate, generate. All right, very good. 
okay just want to look at the code a little bit further a uh, key thing here is the uh, how is this integrated in with the R suite code base let's let's take a look well let's also want to show you auction auction has got this nice support for data maps uh, for data in general so here I opened up the those files so I'm looking at that hierarchy data map that we were looking at let's it renders it using this uh, I think called a data map manager um, I could view it in this way uh, if I want to open this using the editor so you can see there's the XML uh, let's see what sub XML looks like and they got this uh, authoring mechanism here so if you want to look at how the markup toward this implementation we are using it to create books and let's look at the it's a little more involved but similar idea uh, has references to these topics and in this case you know just to recap earlier we talked about before was that we converted a word doc into data so what we're looking at right now let's look at the corresponding word document that's right here so you're wondering where these chapters come from and that chapter is coming from so looking at the Word document, and you can see here's the, the style. So we have Word documents. Authors create the content. Uh, we got copy editors that will um, pull that manuscript content and, and apply tags. And so you look at we're looking at Chapter Two, Fun with Fudge Factor. And the reason why you could see on the left side here, there's chapters and these are our topics so this chapter is a topic and the reason why it's a topic because it's prefixed with this topic dash uh, style right here so when we run that doc to data transform it's looking for these topic dash styles and from there it's carving up that word doc into these sub XMLs and, and that's what these are right here so it will create the data map and then it will create these um, data topics so let's let's open up this one and say take a look so as I was saying earlier um, it's trying to well, let's format it a little cleaner so it's got these paragraph sections it's got a body section so it's really there's no styling really it's just maybe groupings and lists and things like this um, so that's a good example of a data topic um, so I think we covered a lot of ground there well one thing I do want to show is how does this, uh, how does R Suite uh, incorporate this? Well, it, it uses this verbatim. So let's take a look at the source code. I'm going to open up the R Suite. Uh, here we go. So here's the R Suite code. Really, two sections. So there's doc types. So this implementation of R suite is um, using data open toolkit and to provide the custom functionality it's got to create these doc types and that's what this directory here is so you can see it's got chapters there's a glossary entries there's um, parts uh, there's sidebars area uh, sec and there's uh, topics and subsections so we don't want to get into details on that too much now that's the document types but here's where the transforms reside so in here the, the here's the the word to data transform XSL T and it uh, uses this uh, right here this XML file so that's all I want Gary Russo thanks for listening